Our subject for today is Fender's active instruments and what to expect from them. Fender has a lot of subcategories these days. They have American instruments, they have Mexican instruments, they have Squire series. One thing that sticks out though is their active modern instruments. Those modern instruments are not where you would normally go when you're looking for a Fender. You will probably go for a more era-specific vintage instrument. I think they are a lot more attractive, more charming for a Fender. But if you are a working musician who has lots of live gigs, studio sessions, that might not be the case for you. You might want to go for a jack of all trades modern instrument. If you decide to go for a Fender, there are a couple of advantages and disadvantages. Let's talk about them. Now what I have on my lap is an American Elite Series Active 4-string Ash Body with a Maple Fork Fretboard Jazz Bass. As I'm shooting this video, the latest and greatest active instrument for American active instrument for Fender is the Ultra series. There are a couple of different things with the Ultra, it's not our subject today, but they are essentially the same bass. Also, they are not producing ash bodies anymore. I think a beetle is running through the ash forests in the US, so they are holding on to their stocks for more custom shop vintage instruments. They try not to use ash bodies for their production models since, I don't know, maybe ash is gonna be extinct in 10 years. Alright, the biggest advantage I can think about for having a Fender is their name on the headstock. When you show up for a live session, when you show up for a gig or recording session, if you show up with a 4-string Fender, a passive Fender, active Fender, it doesn't matter what you show up with. If you have a Fender, people will automatically assume that you're here for a business. On the contrary, let's assume that you show up to a gig with a 6-string with exotic woods, maybe the body shape is weird, maybe the bass is weird with fan frets. Your bass could sound amazing, it could be better than any Fender that ever produced, but you know, you have that uh-oh effect when you show up with that bass. When you go up with a Fender, you're safe. Active Fenders are trying to solve a couple of problems the passive vintage instruments have. The first problem they are trying to solve is their noise problem. With single coil pickups, when you solo one pickup over the other, you will probably get a noise with the passive vintage Fender pickups. With those new noise series, it's dead silent most of the time. Let's play both pickups as well. Most of the time, if there is nothing extreme with the ground connection or something, they are dead silent. P basses, by construction, by nature, doesn't have that same noise problem as jazz basses do, since they have a one speed coil pickup over here, with reverse, I believe, it's reverse to phase, so the noise levels cancels each other out. Now, you can always argue that the noisy pickup sounds better over the noisiest ones. I agree with you, but if you have noise on top, the sound is useless. You can have the best sound in the world, you have noise, you can't use that. So I believe, I truly believe in the most cases, noiseless is the way to go. Now let's get to the active part. The best thing about these basses is, with the flick of a switch, you can go passive. That easy. But of course, the active part gives you more control. Most of them have 3 band EQ, bass, treble and mid-range. Let's boost the bass. Flat. Cutting. Yeah, treble. Flat. Cutting. Mid range. Flat. Cut. You also have a tone control. When you go passive, this tone control gets active, you can use that tone control with the passive mode only. It's the same control with your vintage passive instruments.
Now in a control studio environment, I prefer passive basis since I have all the time in the world to fine tune my app, fine tune my sound with the plugins. But when you're in a recording situation with an engineer or something, you don't have, you have to be quick. You don't have all the time in the world. With an active bass, with a twist of a couple of knobs, you can shape your sound the way you like. I also feel like the construction is nicer with those Elite series and Ultra series with Fender. The quality control with Fender is not perfect. You will always know that, I assume. But I think those active, more high-end instruments have better quality control over the passive ones. Also, these models have features like neck heels so you can access the higher frets easier. If you have a block of wood here, you cannot access those higher frets easily. With those modern instruments, you have a neck heel. Also, we have a Music Man type wheel for trusted adjustments with those Elite series. I don't know why, but they got rid of this with the new Ultra series. With the Elite series, you don't have an easy access to your battery compartment. You have to use a screwdriver. With the Ultra series, you can have an easy access, a Music Man type battery compartment, but you don't have the wheel type adjustment honestly i still don't know why they got rid of that maybe i assume you can't have it all with a fender you have to compromise a bit i don't know now the final and the most important question is it worth it you should know that you're always paying a fender tax when you're paying a fender instrument you could probably get a better quality instrument a better sounding instrument in the same price range but it doesn't it won't say fender on the headstock but you don't have to justify your every purchase if you like that fender sound you like that fender look Go for it, purchase it. At the end of the day, it always comes down to music you create, not what instrument you have on your lap. See you on the next one.